Let's do this. Let's do this. Well, this is fun. Dude, what you sipping on, bro? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, a great glass of wine that I picked up literally like just the other day. Dude, I haven't had wine in so long and uh, this hits. Oh, sure. dude, it hits and it's and it's cheap. It was like 15 bucks, man. It's not even like anything super special as as wine should be exactly no i completely agree man i completely agree well finn welcome Uh, and i guess to anybody who's checking in for the first time since this is the tomorrow creative video um side of it um slash finn's podcast as well we're gonna add this to your thing right okay sweet um I guess anybody who's checking in, welcome. This is the first time we've organized this studio as a dedicated podcast space. Um, What's really fun about this is um, we have a very special guest coming by tomorrow in Grayson Murphy, who has, what, 70,000 Instagram followers and is really well known in the trail and track community who's coming to uh, be interviewed by yours truly, Finn, tomorrow. Yeah, great runner. A lot of great thoughts on the sport, too great social media presence, business owner. So I think we'll have a lot of cool things to talk about and I'm excited to have her on. Yeah. Dude, I I know, man. So am I, I'm pretty stoked. I'm stoked that this looks really good um, from every angle that we got so far. It's looking pretty awesome. I'm excited to edit this. And, um, and one thing that people should also know who's watching this is uh, this is like a tester (laughs) in order to prep for tomorrow to make sure everything looks and sounds really good. But also we wanted to discuss uh, the growth of what Finn has going on right now. So Finn, if you don't mind, like, go ahead and like, tell us all about the podcast. Yeah. So I am the host of a show called the single track podcast, and it was born out of this vision to have conversations about how the sport of mountain ultra trail running is growing. So primarily interviewing people that are business owners in the sport that have some sort of influence on the culture of the sport that are race directors that are pro athletes Anybody that's trying to make a living in the sport, that's who I was initially interested in having conversations with. We've since branched out, so we cover athlete stories. We really cover anybody with an interesting uh, perspective on the sport, and we're about 12 episodes in, and we have a newsletter now as well. Uh, We have a studio. I think one of the things that I'm the most excited about is working with Mike Tamayo on a lot of the growth of the show from a social media standpoint, making it more accessible in different formats. Um, Yeah. I mean, I think if you want, we can go back and talk about how this whole thing was born from the very beginning. (laughs) That'd be a fun story. But uh, I think you and I work together really well. We have a lot of similar creative visions. Uh, You supply the talent. Sometimes I supply the ideas at a bare minimum. (laughs) Oh, more than that, man. You you supply a lot more than that. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of things I'm excited about, but the next step of the show is definitely um, just presenting it in a in a more uh, I don't know how to put it, just like a more professional way, like 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 with like the logo and with the YouTube format and our Instagram presence. Like you're such a master at that, and I'm excited to have your expertise there. Um, yeah, so I don't know. That's I think that's what I have to say right now. Awesome. I mean, I'm honored that you want to work with me on this stuff. Um, I do like your idea of going back and talking about how it started. Um, So if as long as it's like PG enough to to chat about with your with your listeners, um, we can definitely give that a a visit if you want. Oh, let's do it, man. I mean, where do we where did where do we start? It was early April. Yep. Uh, 2021. Early April 2021. um, I guess it was 2021. It wasn't it wasn't pandemic. It was uh, definitely 2021. So uh I think I had already started my YouTube channel Um, and I got home. It was a, it was our home meet that year. uh, And I had done something really stupid. It it was embarrassing. I was mortified. I was trying to measure this, this uh, (laughs) steeple barrier and I ruined the entire race for everybody. And it turned out to be this uh, um, engineering tape as opposed to like a standard U S like tape measure. And we get home and we're just slamming beers in the middle of <laughs> the night. In of course, City. as we should be. That's how you solve those problems. <laughs> exactly. We're we're jamming out to Toto. That's right. Which is amazing. Uh, who doesn't love jamming out to Toto? We love uh, early '80s rock. Exactly. Oh, that'll officially be the intro and outro of this video. Of uh, oh yeah, waiting for your love by Toto is going to be great. <laughs> um, but we were jamming out and we're all getting a little bit a little bit toasty, 
And then I pitched to the group that we should create the uh, studio that was down in the basement, perhaps in a video that you guys had seen before. You had seen it in some other shots. It was um, the lit up background kind of stone looking uh, area that we had downstairs in the old house that was built in like the 1890s. So the house was right. super old, but it was a great idea that we had. Um, and then, you know, instead of it being just like a drunken promise, we started what the next day. Yeah. I mean, the next day we had brooms and shovels and trash bags and disinfectant in hand and just like spent the next like 48 hours just like polishing that place out. I mean, it went from just being this like trash and like yeah, I'll say like rat infested basement to like just this like sterile, clean space that ended up becoming our recording studio. And like we ended up having our buddy Vinny, who we can talk about too, come in and do a lot of like the woodworking and setting up of like drywall and stuff. But like we went from like zero to 60 in two days. And I think what's funny about it is like it's so common to have these like drunken nights where you kind of make all these like pledges and like, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And like, I think the funny thing to me is we actually acted on like some like drunk ideas and like, here we are. <laughs> and here we are. And now you are literally up to thousands of listeners an episode, which is insane. And, and to know that that came from, you know, just like you said, a drunken night, a drunken idea. And instead of just like not following through, we started the next day. And and uh, what I'll make sure to do for anybody who's uh, who's watching right now, um, I'll link uh, the creation of the studio right here uh, in the portion of the video. So you can definitely check that out if you'd like. Um, but it was a really fun process. I mean, we're down there masked up, uh, you know, probably getting cancer, um, killing rats and, and getting rid of <laughs> <laughs> mouse carcasses. And, uh, and yeah, and we followed through, man. And then it started and, and it's awesome, dude. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It was really fun, and and I'm really happy that we had that night. To be honest, one one I do want to go backward just for one second. So for anybody who's listening to this from the single track audience, can you tell them a bit about your background in running and your role with the University of Utah? And then I also think when you get a chance to talk about the role that that house played in like the development of our community too. Oh my goodness, um, I would love to talk about that. You know how much that house like how much I adore that house and and how much it did for me. Um, so a little bit of background on me in, in running, first of all, especially for your audience. Um, I ran for the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. I was uh, at 800 meter slash miler when I was in college. Um, so not quite the same distances that you and your listeners have. But one but... second, a damn good 800 meter runner. <laughs> a damn good. Can you supply some numbers, please? Uh, so uh, 148 um, collegiately, 146 post collegiately. Uh, I went to the indoor U.S. national championships. Um, definitely got my butt kicked, uh, but it was an incredible experience nonetheless. So, I, and um, while I never broke four in the mile, I had to run, run 401. It's like the one PR that will forever just hang over my head. <laughs> I probably will never break. But um, what's what's been really fun about the transition from middle distance to moving out here was just like. I don't know, appreciating the long distance and appreciating what people who listen to this podcast and yep. people who, you know, you run with like do, because like the stuff that you guys do is insane to me, <laughs> like hundred mile races. That's incredible. And, and for anybody to say that that's not tough because quote unquote, you're not running fast. I've heard people say that before. They're completely wrong. I, I've, when I moved out here uh, and the first time I tried to run a mountain run with you guys, like we're like, oh, we're going to run like 15 miles. And I was like, oh, we'll be done in like 90 minutes. And you guys <laughs> laughed at me <laughs> yeah, just like that. And I was like, oh, what do you mean? Like everybody runs like six minute pace because I had the mentality of this like really like, you know, middle distance oriented athlete. And uh, sure enough, even though we're running like nine, 10 minute pace, you are hoofing it, man. Like your heart rate is up to 200 and like you're breathing hard. And I was not all like, you know, I wasn't adapt to the altitude yet, you know, Um but yeah, so that was a little bit of background for me from college and moving here. Um, I currently work as the director of operations at the University of Utah. It is a really fun job. I love that job to know and we travel so much. Um, for the I kinda, women's uh, track and field cross country team? Yes, yes, track and field and cross country teams. Um, you know, uh, speaking of, we do have the NCAA regional this week. Um, so anybody listening who's local, come down to Provo and support the Utes. Um, but it's well, a great we're job. We're recording this on uh, November 9th. So what is it? The 12th that's happening? Oh, good call. I should have said that. Yeah. We'll get the, this up. The experienced podcaster versus <laughs> the non-experienced podcaster. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so that's that's what I do. Um, and that house, let's, let's talk about that house. So when I moved here, I moved in with two very close friends of mine. Um, one of them was my coach in college. 
and she you know graciously offered me a spot in that house and they left she is now the head coach of the university of wisconsin who's kicking a lot of butt right now um so when they left i just stayed in the house and i moved in and i offered to pay them rent every month and i did um and then it slowly grew uh, a little bit among the friend group because what i love to do and what our friend vince loved to do was to have you know social breakfasts after long run yeah and uh it started off with you know the guests that were having tomorrow in Grayson and me and Vince. And that was it. And then what slowly started happening was we were doing bigger group runs, um, inviting more people over to the house. And then, uh, you know, it kind of grew into this weekly tradition of everybody doing long run and then uh, pancake breakfast at the house. And I think the largest group we had was like 30 to 35 people one week. Easily. Easily 30 to 35 people one week. And it was awesome. And, And, you know, for a little bit there, Vince even got Kodiak Cakes to commit to sponsoring the Sunday pancakes, which is incredible, right? So it's grown, it's grown from three people to this potentially sponsored event here pretty soon. And, and, you know, we're really excited about that. And I pay a lot of that to that house. Yeah, that's a great, I mean, that's how we met, I think. And yeah. it's, I think one thing I'm so grateful for about that moment in time, I mean, the house has since been sold and we're in a new location, which we can also talk about. But um, I think that that house is responsible for so many like serendipitous encounters and new friendships that would not have been formed otherwise. I mean, our friendship, you talk about Vinny, Garrett, Colton, Eli, Brent, Grayson, Jocelyn. I mean, the list goes on. And I'm just so thankful in retrospect for how much of a role that that house played in pancakes played in building up the Salt Lake running community. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. And then like, you know, right off the back of that, how much it's helped what we're doing right now. Yeah. I mean, that's like going back to the story of us being drunk, coming up with that idea, like that basement was the pinpoint was the beginning of like what we're doing right now. And, and it has since grown. And, um, and you know, I, I love that house and, and, you know, but what's exciting is like, okay, what's in for the next house, you know, right. like this, for example, like what we're doing right now, we don't, we didn't have a, a separate room to turn into a studio and now we do. Right. And we're able to devote this space just for something like this. To the listeners, they'll be familiar with this. I often talk about like who in the ultra running, trail running community is is building the equivalent of pancakes elsewhere and who's building these running teams. And the reason I bring that topic thread up so much is because I've seen how it can work so well when people like Mike put it together. And so I think that's why we're reminiscing over this. And uh, it was just a special moment in time. I mean, it's not over. You know, we we have a new place here that's fantastic. But yeah, what what an era. The next question that I want to ask you or I want to make a comment first and that is you are somebody who is you're one of the most talented people I know you're one of the most multifaceted talented and I'm sorry to prop you up but it's true <laughs> there's two people that I admire in this world particularly uh when it comes to like this like uh intersection of running and design and comedy and stuff and it's you and Brent and I got to live with you guys for six months so I know it's true <laughs> but where did where did this interest in sort of the design side of our sport come in and how did you hone that skill and where is it, where is it at now? Oh my goodness. That, that's a great question. Um, so what really started it off and I, and I have a small story for, uh, for you on this to kind of like lead it in uh, and I'll make it real short. But when I got to university of Utah, I was handed a tablet. Um, and it was like this little windows tablet and they were like, Oh yeah, you have the Adobe suite on there. Like everybody gets it, like whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, and then I got handed a, a, a race day graphic from an yeah. intern in the design department. And I was looking at it and I was like, this is trash. Like I'm looking at this thing and, and you know, if anybody who's listening to this who made that, I'm sorry, but like it was real pixelated. Uh, it was not well done. The cutout was, was terrible. Um, I mean, there's like pieces of the background bleeding into the cutout yeah. of, the, of the image. And I was like, this is terrible. And like, I don't even know how to use Photoshop and I can do better than this. So I opened up Photoshop for the first time on that tablet and I was real intimidated and I was like, oh man, like I have no idea what I'm doing, but like- Wait, I'm so you're self-taught? Completely self-taught, yes. Shit. And it has grown tremendously from then. So I started doing all the school's custom race day graphics and it was, um, it kind of turned into this thing of like, hey, who's gonna be on the new graphic? Who's gonna be the face of the race? I think one of the athletes said. Wait a second, how do you, how, what does that conversation look like with, with like uh, the head coach, for example, where you say, hey, I think I wanna, I can do this better and I want to take over the job of like our social media and all of our graphic design and stuff. 
Um, he was totally fine with it. And, and actually who initially handed me off, uh, the social media was coach Mac and she was my roommate at the time and my yeah. old coach. So she handed it, she's like, I can't wait to get it off my phone. Like it's all you. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then, uh, started like kind of getting creative with it. And you know, when I first got the page, we had like 2,500 followers and yeah. we're nine followers away from 6,000. That's so like, incredible. It, yeah. In, in a, in just like about, I don't know, a year and a half of me really controlling well it. Well over doubled. Yeah. Yeah. Where, yeah, we have over doubled uh, our, our followers count. And um, it's really fun to, to run that page. And, uh, you know, with the graphic design stuff, it just slowly grew. And I just kept making more graphics. I thought it was really fun. Um, and, and, yeah, it just kind of became their tradition of, like, every single meet, I have a custom graphic and not some sort of, like, uniform-looking university graphic. Um, and then, yeah, it, it's kind of just growing from there. I now have a business from it. And now I have a, a business deal with you and your business, which is yeah. really fun. So yeah. it literally started from a tablet and then, like, it's all kind of started from there. Yeah. It, for anyone that's watching on YouTube, uh, there's a couple pieces of Mike's work that are lining the walls here. I'm looking at the uh, University of Utah 2019 schedule photo, the 2021. It's really good work. And yeah, I mean, we've talked about this before. I mean, there's just so much opportunity, I think, in our sport to uh, overhaul a lot of design. Like, yeah. I know that you have an eye for it. Like we've, I won't name any of the companies that you've said, I wish I could, uh, help them improve their uh their social <laughs> media and stuff but yeah it's just what excites me i mean in, of of the many elements of our friendship one thing that excites me is just the way you think about the intersection of design and running and that's why when this channel got big enough i was like you're the first person i want to work with from like a business standpoint i'm making it better because lord knows i do not have the gifts that you have been uh handed like you have a design eye. i mean you just said like uh, I saw that this, I saw the work that this intern did and without even having any experience with the software, I just knew that I could, I could make it better. And that's somebody who's operating in their sphere of genius, which is your sphere of genius. So I really appreciate that, man. That's uh, you're going to bring a tear to my eye. Um, it, it, it really has grown a lot, man. And I'm really excited. And the reason why I have those on the wall is because of some of my early work. I'm like, you know, knowing that that's where I started and I can see the slow improvement from there. But, I, you know, touching back on like you saying like, you know, the eye with the sport, I think it's because a, a big, a big reason why I want to do this is because I don't think running gets enough love. And I don't think that trail running gets enough love or mountain okay. running. Or I don't think running as a sport gets enough love. Unless you're an Olympian, you're not really known <laughs> and you're not paid well. Um, and nobody really makes really high quality track and field graphics. And, you know, I will also not list the different companies who sure. I wish would call me, <laughs> but I love the sport. It rhymes with schmo frack. <laughs> it rhymes with schmo frack. Oh, it does. Um, <laughs> oh, the graphics are trash. But like uh, nobody's doing high quality running graphics. And I think that's a shame. And, uh, you know, especially as somebody who's grown around, the, grown up around the sport so much, and I've been watching track and field since I was a kid, it's like been something that has engulfed my entire life. Yeah. And for those athletes not to get the same love that, you know, the basketballs and the footballs of the world do was yeah. a crime to me. Yeah. So I'm like, Hey, like if you want me to make you running graphics, I'm all for it. I think that running deserves just as much of a piece of the pie as everybody else. For anybody out there that is artistically oriented, design oriented, like you are um, both who do you actually, yeah, who do you look to outside the sport of running for inspiration? Like when you're looking to get ideas for how to create a graphic, are there any particular like YouTube channels you follow or just people that you're like, you know, following on Instagram or like, Oh yeah, what they just did was like freaking cool. And like, I'm going to try to like take bits and pieces of that into my own work. That's an awesome question too, man. Um, so I think for my YouTube stuff, my all time favorite YouTuber is MKBHD. Um, he does a ton of tech reviews. He does a lot of like just tech knowledge stuff, not even just reviews. He touches base on new technology. Um, and that's kind of where it started. And also his videos are so crispy. Like they just like, you look at it, you put it up in 4k and you're like, for some reason that 4k looks so much better than my 4k. <laughs> like I say one thing. Yeah. Uh, when I started this podcast, I almost went with like trash mics and Mike has such like a high, uh, appetite for quality and like a no bullshit tolerance level there. He's like, dude, you have to get the best mics in the business. And so that's why we have these sure mics. It's all mics influence. <laughs> I, like, I, you have zero tolerance for anything except the best. I do not mess around. I'm like, Hey, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this right. I almost cursed there. Sorry. Anyways, I, like, I interrupted you. I'm pie. No, you're good. You're good. I was like, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right. So we invested in cameras. Um, we invested in the mics. We invested in lighting. I mean, yeah. we redid the whole basement for quite a bit of money. Um, because I, I don't think that, you know, doing anything, 
half-assed is worth it, right? Like, let's go all in. And sure enough, like, dude, you your podcast sounds amazing. And like, people love that sound. It's almost like ASMR to some people when you have a really high quality sounding mic with like not a lot of fuzz yeah. in the background or extra noise. So yeah, I, I love that. Um, but yeah, touching back based on uh, MKBHD, like his videos are really inspiring and it gives me a lot of ideas for shots for my own like yeah. tech stuff. Um, when it comes to graphics though, there's not really somebody that I follow particularly. I just know that... Um, I kind of have an idea when I'm going into creating something. Um, And if I'm lacking on some creative juices flowing or something like that, I have like no problem like going to Pinterest and stealing ideas. Like I'll scroll through and be like, I like elements of here and I like elements of here. And I also want to add my own thing in there. So we're going to do that. And then like I comboed all that kind of thing into one. And sometimes like I steal like this much work and then I create this much work, right? Like I just need like a little bit of an edge, like a drop to kind of like get the waterfall going, you know? I think one of the reasons why I like your work so much is you're actually not taking a lot of ideas from the running world. You're actually going elsewhere to other industries like the tech world, for example, to bring back design principles. And that's so cool. And that's why I think what you do from a running standpoint is unlike anything I've ever seen because it's foreign to this world. It's like you, it's like the equivalent of like you or me traveling to like China for like a little bit and then coming back with like all these different like ideas of culture because we just experienced it like yeah you're bringing back the goods from another world yeah pretty much right so hell yeah yeah no it's a lot of fun and it's kind of the same thing of like i don't know what i what i do for for your brand man it's like okay if i have any ideas for like a thumbnail or something like that i might i might like hmm well this little tiny icon would look it up in this corner like let me like just come up with that or like oh maybe what else can i do this to make it look real clean but minimal like okay i'll look something up and be like oh i like this but i also like this and kind of like mesh them together if you know if it's not flowing so yeah, and it's like I said, it's an honor to kind of be that person with like what you have going, man. Like it's it's honestly like a joy. Dude, I appreciate it. By the way, we gotta give we gotta give our buddy Brent a shout out too. Absolutely. Brent um, un- unfortunately Brent is the second most talented person I know in the world <laughs> after you. He he knows that. He knows that. But Brent is an incredible artist as well. He's responsible for the single track logo that he everyone is. knows. Mm-hmm. Um he's another person who's self taught. Like I think we gave him that I- iPad. And like he became like he had like a PhD in drawing on that thing and like immediately. Yeah. Immediately had it. Immediately. By the way, for anybody that is interested in running history, he he ran at Chico State with Jimmy Elam and Anthony Castales and Tim Tollefson. And if if that 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 man can run and he can run fast and from a competitive standpoint, we have been trying to get him back into the sport for so long because he'd be adding to that whole Chico State ultra running lore. Uh, oh yeah if he came back because we all know what he's capable of oh he's a monster i mean when he was in college he was doing like 50 minute 10 mile tempos like every like twice every week the guy was an animal yeah and yeah uh, we'll we'll get him eventually don't worry just wanted to shout him out because he's uh he's near and dear to our hearts too and he had a huge influence on what we're doing here today so absolutely absolutely and for any anybody watching on youtube um i will relink brent's video on the creation of this logo right here up in the corner so you can definitely click that and uh and and revisit and kind of see exactly who we're talking about and and, you know all the talent that he brings to the channel yep yeah man dude where we where are we going next with this do you want to talk about uh like our plans for the future and like how we're going to work together or what are you thinking yeah let's do that 100 percent. because like if this is at 23 that probably has like four minutes left let's touch that because like we can add that to the video okay yeah um yeah so let's get into it i mean we're we're going to start working together on a pretty consistent basis really right now like it, it starts right now with uh, our interview with grace and murphy tomorrow you're looking at this set this is all a product of mike's genius i never could have set this up in my <laughs> wildest dreams um but yeah, talk a bit about like what we're going to be doing together in the next like few months. Awesome. So yeah, the next few months, um, it, it's big times. It's all about growth. I mean, um, one of the first things that we did was uh, yesterday we talked about, or two days ago or something like that, we talked about new thumbnails. Like like yeah. let's let's rebrand. Let's let's re kind of like um, uh, yeah, like kind of rebrand ourselves with the same original logo, similar color schemes, but just like have different ideas. So we started there. Another thing that we would love to do is create a separate YouTube channel for the single track podcast, which mm-hmm. is another thing that I'm, I'm really excited about doing with Finn and managing and editing video. Um, because initially what we'll do is we'll, we'll have pieces of it related to the, to my creative channel, but as it grows, we're going to just like have it dedicated just for that. So people can go straight to the single track, um, YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, which is really exciting, right? I mean, another channel that's, that's, you know, almost like a, an affiliate channel with, yeah. uh, with Tamaya creative. I love that. Um, and then also looking at different mediums to get on and, and different mediums to 
reach out to people and give them the opportunity to watch certain clips and, you know, and then link that to official videos or actually like linking them to these um, podcast itself, like TikTok, um, Instagram reels. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, I think YouTube clips. called like YouTube shorts. That's, yeah. YouTube that's shorts. Too. Yeah. We can definitely do that. And we would basically, we were talking about the possibility of like just rotating it to fill up the entire screen on your phone. So you can yeah. see that just rotate your phone because those don't change orientation. Um, and yeah, and, and on the YouTube channel, what we're going to do is instead of putting an hour long video on, we're going to have like really interesting points from each podcast. Um, and then like make that like anywhere from a 10 to 20 minute video. And that ways you can listen to the rest of it. Um, because it's going to draw you in. I mean, I think one of the most interesting points you made to me when we were talking about working together was that, you know, you have this podcast, but not everybody has an hour of their day to listen to it. And you kind of want to meet people where they are, uh, how much attention they can give to you. And I love your idea of like, hey, let's let's take that episode, but let's break it up into like six, 10 minute clips yeah. or like 20, 30 second clips and distribute it on all these platforms so that people can find it where they tend to spend their time and consume it in a way that's most convenient to them. I thought that was brilliant and I'm so excited about that. I think that's going to be a huge way to reach new audiences. 100%. I mean, anywhere that we can, you know, tease it and then place a link so they can listen to the entire thing. I mean, podcasts are huge nowadays, man. I mean, one of my favorite things to do on like an early morning drive is instead of listening to music, like it's a cup of coffee and a podcast. Yeah. And um, I think that what we're doing here with the investment in quality um, and then giving everybody, like you said, the opportunity to listen at their leisure. Yeah. I mean, anywhere we can reach people, it's going to be huge. Yeah. Yeah. Really excited about that, man. And I'm stoked that we got this partnership going on because uh, it's honestly an honor. And one thing I think I w- one thing I definitely want to do is I want to do these episodes more often. Like, I think it'll be fun to check in with each other to see like how the business side of this is moving along because I think there are people in the audience that are interested at some point in starting their own thing. And if we can provide value to them, just like showing them the behind the scenes of like how we put this stuff together, it would be so cool. Absolutely. Like how you create the YouTube channel and, and, and cut video and like how I think of like scripting future episodes and like preparing for guests. Like if we can give back in some way, Plus, man, you talk good. <laughs> I talk I talk real good. I'm from North Carolina. We talk real good. <laughs> so, dude, I, I think that it'll be fun to check in. Maybe if it's just like once a month or, or whatever. I think the more we can show the behind the scenes, the better. And, um, yeah, for anybody that's listening to this on the podcast, the visual side of this single track uh, effort is going to get a lot more impressive in a very short amount of time. Uh, thanks to the guy across the table from me. So. I've been waiting for your love and it's been here all-